You might say that Ramon and Shandy Tencano were successful. The way this world measures success, they had just about everything people could want. But then they made a radical decision to turn away from material success and become full-time missionaries. I'm John Bradshaw, and this is our conversation. Ramon, Shandy, thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you, you for having, having us. us. I appreciate you taking your time. Let's, let's start by Praise talking about you today. Mm -hmm. Missionaries, very involved in outreach, proclaiming the gospel. But let's back up. Tell me where you're from. Uh, we're from Indonesia. Okay. We live there. So we, that's, that's a big and a vast place stretching from yes, it here is. to there. So which part of Indonesia is, is home it's for you? It's as big as America, the continent, yeah. uh, two thirds water. We're, we live uh, south uh, of Jakarta, the capital, about two hours, up in the countryside with the villagers, and uh, that's where we live. Okay, yeah. okay. So tell me about life in Indonesia. When I say Indonesia and Christians think of Indonesia, they think this has the largest Muslim population yes. of any country in the world. So as missionaries in Indonesia, as Christian missionaries, how welcome are you among the population to share Jesus? Well, despite the fact that we're um, Muslim populated, uh, we're not Muslim government. Yeah. So there's actually room for us to, to do our evangelistic efforts there, um, which includes broadcasting. Okay. So we, we took on the satellite um, ministry 2011. And um, funny enough, we, we, we got approved. So we've been there ever since almost uh, 12 years now. Even, so, with, mm -hmm. go ahead. Even though, you know, Indonesian, it's not easy for you to go to their houses and then pray for them, you know, like give them Bible study because I come from the Muslim background too. My father is a Muslim. So, you know, what we need is, in Indonesia is like, you need to be, you know, like the, the books, living books, you know. The your open choice book. is the open book for them. That is like really neat because, you know, if you give books, they see the cover, they know, like you are Christian, you need to put something, you know, you, need, you don't want, you want to Christian, Christian, Christianize. Christianize me. So that's why, you know, we don't want that because they can, they can accept that. So how they, how they accept that, we need to be the book. And then through the television, they watch our program silently. They yeah. call us silently like, hey, thank you. You know, I can see the, you know, how the Bible itself and everything. Yeah. So put it to practical. Yeah, um, put it to practical. Yeah. So you've been running a network that reaches all of Indonesia for the last 11 years. Yes, mm -hmm. almost yeah, 12 now. Very, very exciting. Praise yeah. the Lord. Well, let's talk about you a little bit in, the, in, in your past. Before you came to faith in Christ, both of you experienced what I think anybody would call success. So Ramon, let's start asking, with me asking you, what did life look like for you back in your years in business? Well, um, the only thing I, I knew uh, in life was to make more and more money. Just because um, I, I've, I've been conditioned in such a way that that um, you know, for for us to to be respected, just you know, you got to make more money. And um, not only that, the the only key to happiness was uh, money. That's what I was uh, taught. Despite the fact that I grew up in the church, when I finished college at 23, somebody actually took me on a challenge. You know, a friend of mine, hey, let's let's race to the first million dollar. I'm like, whoa. You know, I never had this kind of race before, but it kind of stayed in the back of my mind. You know, the only thing I, I thought was actually going to bring me to become somebody and then to bring me to this uh, security level was to make more and more money. And then I, I did just that. What sort of businesses were you involved in? Well, I, I was involved in all kinds of things. I, I started my business life in Indonesia. We had a government concession to, to run ports and then we developed the port and then I sold the concession to somebody and they made money and then from there we developed a few things. My last business was uh, we produce uh, calcium oxide. It's like the um, uh, ingredient for many different industries. So yeah, I did that until 2008. Okay. Shandy, how about you? You were, you were accustomed to living a pretty comfortable life. How was that? And describe that life for me. I was raised and born with the family who doesn't know God and then, you know, maybe I can say that I'm an, I, I am the majority of people mm -hmm. nowadays. Like, you know, my family value is, you know, uh, having money is everything for you. 
because money is the key for happiness. And then, you know, my, my uh, religion is, you <laughs> business. know, business, and then my God is money. You know, yeah. I've been taught that kind of way. So, you know, all of my life, my aim is money. So I kind like having have money since I was when my age like maybe yeah. 20 20 yeah 20 19 you know 19 like that age and then I have everything what I want I can go everywhere you know and then that is my uh, She probably doesn't want to say it but she was um <laughs> going after rich individuals yeah, <laughs> because you know I come from that society yeah well, you that know society. like that Money You're is everything. beautiful. All you do is just find that. Somebody you know, who's rich. Somebody who's rich. So, you know, if you have that kind of lifestyle, and then, you know, you're going to be happy. So what was yeah. that lifestyle like? What, what, give me an, open mm -hmm. a window into that lifestyle for me and, and let me see what, what, what life was mm -hmm. like for you. Lifestyle is, you know, like a fancy bag that all the women... Fancy everything. Fancy everything, you know, go to the fancy hotel, restaurant, you know. She and would then, pay twenty thousand dollars for a piece of bag, mm -hmm. mm. and, and then, then there's this fancy phone with um, all kinds of features. Then mm -hmm. we're paying eight thousand dollars for um, things like that. And, and then having your own assistant, your own hairstylist, your own you know makeup artist, you know everything. Everybody can do your nails, and then you just choose like, okay, I want that, I want that, and I I cannot cook, I cannot clean houses, and everything. I I'm not a future mother, you know. I'm not a future wife, you know. It's not it's not on my things. You know, so that's why you know like when Ramon wants to be with me, I told him I'm like this. You need to provide everything. You know, <laughs> I don't I don't know how to cook. I don't and then I'm not I'm not a morning person. I have I need to have my own world and then you need to provide you everything, you know. So in your background, we're talking about serious money. Mhm. Mm Real money yes the reason I want to uh, mention that and emphasize that mm -hmm. is because life for you today is really different, different. Mm -hmm. so so okay Ramon you are a self-made very successful businessman Shandy you had found your way into the lifestyle of the rich and famous yes but today no Today, very different. So let, let's do a quick flip. Yeah. We'll, we'll fill in the gaps yeah. in a moment. Yeah. What's life like today? Well, we're missionaries in the front line, and uh, we live amongst the um, villagers. You know, we, we have a television ministry on the satellite, but uh, our studio is uh, situated amongst uh, the villagers mm -hmm. with whom we're interacting. And um, we have a clinic there to run. We, we serve people. Living and by uh, faith. we're living by faith now. <laughs> yeah, ex know. explain we're that to me because what <laughs> someone is thinking right now is, well, if you ran with billionaires and millionaires, <laughs> you, you probably still have this enormous pile of money in the bank and yes. you're fine. Mm -hmm. What's the reality for you? I don't mean to be too personal, but what's the reality? Because it sounds like you've made a massive change, mm -hmm. but someone's thinking, not a yeah. big change. <laughs> what, what, what sort of change is this? You see, well, you're a lot living of people, by faith, so explain yeah. that for me. Well, actually, when I decided to follow the Lord, you know, rediscover my identity as a Seventh-day Adventist, you know, this is, this was um, actually a burden to me because, you know, it, it was going to entail completely transformed life, right? I knew somehow I was going to become a missionary and start living by faith. And then I was actually ready for that just because simply I, I was sick of my life at that time. You know, there's so many different reasons why, you know, I wasn't really happy with the people that I was surrounded with. And I, I know something, so many bad things is just happening, kind of burdened myself that I knew there's something that was going to fill up my emptiness. Mm -hmm. And then I was so ready, you know, at the time, my transformation actually took place, funny enough, in the uh, light intersection, the stop traffic light. Uh, at the time, I just bought uh, this nice fancy car I, I just wanted. Uh, I gave myself a birthday present. <laughs> And then I thought, oh, it's just another car, but you know, it's gonna give me happiness. You know, the more expensive, it was just, you know, the more happiness I was gonna get from it. And then within three days, the happiness, the excitement is gone, mm. you know? And now I'm like, Lord, what can I be satisfied with now? But I don't know, but only you can fill, fill this void. I, I, at the intersection, I was, 
I was uh, looking uh, next to the car. There's this family with a little ugly car. You know, I would never have. But I saw the family. They're so happy. They're laughing and giggling. I said I was crying really profusely. And then I know, Lord, this is that's what I I want. That's what I need. You know, this is not what I want. And then I'm sick of this life. I decided to actually just venture out to something. And then when you make that claim, Satan's really going to attack you. Sure. And uh, people say, yeah, you have passive income. Now you have reserve to actually just support this work that you're in. And uh, there's so many stories that I, I cannot just cover everything because uh, God helped me to, to be emptied. You know, I was facing many lawsuits, you know, as a result of my prayer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Satan brought me to this accusation. I was framed, and then I, I got cheated upon, and my and my partner ran away with money. And then I was practicing you know, Christianity, you know, getting slapped on the left, giving you right cheek, you know, not pursuing back what I thought rightly was mine. So I was just like, okay, Lord, I know this is all you're doing. And then at some point, you know, I had some legal uh, problems, and then I was uh, jailed for almost two weeks. Uh, I knew God was actually in this, but. Funny enough, I, 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 just, I was just uh, riding with it, you know, to the point where God had to empty it. It didn't really become empty, but we, we came to the point where I, I had to rely on God 100% for the, for the journey that I uh, undertake right now, becoming a missionary. You know, it's, it's a long story, but sure. it became really hard. You know, people say, oh, yeah, sure, you got money stashed out, but you know, it was not really the case. You know, I actually... Um, uh, would describe as like falling from from the sky financially, you know, as a result of my prayer. Mm-hmm. And then God allowed that, praise the Lord, I, I just pressed on and then I, you know, in the beginning two, three years, my wife was like uh, watching from, from distance uh, because our relationship wasn't really that good. And then, but I, I, I was able to convince her and then um, about 2011, praise the Lord, she never really left me, you know. Um, there is an event held by Jesus for Asia, a faith camp <laughs> in Indonesia. And then I, I thought it was the, the, the turning point for her finally, you know, that I'm not the only one who's trying to live by faith. And even though I was trying to give example at home, she, she finally witnessed some stories. And then God actually finally caught her. You know, she actually desired the same thing. Yeah. So, so, so you went from a place of wealth to... What would you, how would you describe that place you went to? Uh, um, God put me in a tough situation. And then uh, I was left with uh, some assets that are really becoming burden. Mm-hmm. You know, we have assets. We're not making the money. They become burden. You, yeah. know, become, you know, you have to maintain you know, taxes, everything. And um, I was placed in a put hard situation with no money at times. As soon as I decided to become missionary. I don't know if this is, oh, God allowed Satan to actually and attack me financially. Um, There's a point I want to make here, and I'm pretty sure you'll agree with me, and, and I, I don't mm-hmm. want anybody to get the wrong impression here. Yes. There's nothing wrong with wealth. Nothing wrong nothing with wealth. Nothing wrong with being wealthy. And, it, and I, 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 I don't think even you would think everyone has been called to mm-hmm. abandon everything and become a missionary living by faith. Oh, yes. Uh, God gives some people the gift of wealth and the Mm -hmm. ability to be wealthy and to make money. That's a skill and a talent, a Mm -hmm. a gift, I think. So I just want to emphasize, Mm -hmm. you're not suggesting there's anything wrong with with being wealthy, right? No, no, no. 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 But I I, I did come to some point where I I felt like I had to punish myself. I'm trying to help God punish myself. You know, we we were actually giving lots of support. I I wanted to venture something that is completely different, just simply because I was sick. I knew that at that time, I felt there's something wrong with wealth. Honestly, I want to say it. It it might be because there was something wrong with wealth for you. That's right, right, from my own perspective. Now, now you mentioned a moment ago you you were empty. Yes. So describe that. Why why were you empty? How, how can how can a person who has everything be empty, Shane? <laughs> because we, we don't have a purpose, right? We don't have the aim. Like we just being thought that money is the key for happiness. And then all we all we want to find is money and money, money. For self. For self, right? And then so I came to that point that I really like frustrated about? Frustrated. Frustrated that I have the money, I have everything, but so look happens. at me. So that's why I go to the, you know, to the alcohol, drugs, and everything because I cannot we find did, money. Yeah. And then 
I, I want to ask some help, but I don't know where to go. And then I see my husband, you know, my husband is raised with the church kind of family, but me, I'm not. So, you know, I'm really far away from, you yeah, know, from the values. From the value. And then I'm looking at him when he start wants to be a missionary. I was so scared. I was like, no, 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 because that's not my things. And then I almost want to get divorced with him because, you know, I respect his choices. I told him, I, re I love you. I respect your choices, but I know my weakness. You know, God, I know what whatsoever you call the name is God. I told him that God maybe put me in the different uh, creation, you know, I was, I'm not like you. Sure. And then, so we need to stop this. And then I go to the church, even though I get baptized to be a Christian, I go to the church, find the godly women for him. <laughs> I told, you know, better you go to the women and then, you know, raise our children and then don't not ever give the children, you know, uh, perkenalan. Apa yeah, name? don't introduce. Don't introduce the to. children the, with the biological mom because they're going to confuse. If you, if you already find the way, better the children go with you. It's a good way. But me, I was like, so really, I don't know the way. I and was then like, the book. And then. Yeah, and then I was, I was like so curious, you know, like, because deep inside my mind, I was like, you know, God, maybe, you know, you just exist with the family, it was just righteous family, which is my husband and me, you know. But hopeless. I mean, hopeless, but, you know, I'm okay with that. I can, like, accept that. You know, I'm sorry. I can, like, you know, if I, if I know my, my background, it's, like, really sad because, you know, people in the world think like me. And then I was like, Lord, Lord, just leave me alone. But he never, he, Lord never want to leave me alone. So that's why, you know, like my mother-in-law says, Shandy, there's an event named Faith Camp. You need to go there because there is a lot of missionary tell them, to, you know, share the story about faith. I was like, what? Faith is, faith is not exist in this modern world. Inside my heart, say like that. It's because my mother-in-law, you know, I just want to be a good <laughs> daughter-in-law, you know. Okay, I go there. And then she looked at me, oh, you're here. I was like, yeah. I was sitting at the back, you know, dress up and everything because after that event, I want to go party with my friends. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, playing with my phone because to give the, the signal that I don't like this event. This is not me. Like everybody knows me, you know, like look at that, that rich woman, you know, she's there sitting at the back playing with my phone. And I hear testimony after testimony. And in my heart, feel the, you know, like the being filled. being filled. I was like, wow, that is excess. And I look at them, all of the missionary. I was like, Lord, look at them from the bottom to the top. You know, they are, they don't, they don't dress up like me, you know, but I see their eyes, Lord. They look I poor. I want that eyes, <laughs> you know, I want that eyes. And I'm crying like, Lord, this is, this is not fair. How come you love them more than you love me? When, when, when most people would think, mm -hmm. I'm, I have so much in my purse or my wallet, mm -hmm. I have everything I need more than them. Mm -hmm. Some might say God loves you more than them, but evidently you're looking and it's going now beyond the surface. You're looking at the heart yeah. and God is speaking to you and awakening a purpose in your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. All right, in just a moment, mm -hmm. we'll talk about how you dived into mm -hmm. ministry, mm -hmm. into missionary work, what that looked like, yeah. running a television yeah network mm -hmm. uh, and how you managed to settle into this brand new life which was an absolutely radical departure we'll be back with more in just a moment my guests are ramon and shandy tancano they are missionaries their lives changed dramatically they are servants of god on the front line back with more from our conversation in just a moment Hello, I'm Dr. Wes Youngberg, and I've just written a book called Memory Makeover, How to Prevent Alzheimer's and Reverse Cognitive Decline. This book is in story form. It's case studies of individuals that I've worked with and my colleagues have worked with where they've actually been able to stop cognitive decline, and 80% of the time have been able to reverse aspects of cognitive decline. If you want to know more about that, get the book Memory Makeover.
Thank you for being part of Conversations brought to you by It Is Written. I'm John Bradshaw. With me are Shandy and Ramon Tancano. They are missionaries. So how do you do it? You have money and headaches. You, you, you have means, but you say, I want to do this. How does a person go about becoming a missionary? What did you do? Well, I, I, I grew up uh, in the church with the values that kept on reminding me that there is a purpose for us to live. That is um, for us to, 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 to be multiplying you know, for God's kingdom. That's always in my mind, so it wasn't really that hard for me to make a journey. It was just a matter of time that you know, I got sick of my life, and then I decided to become a missionary. So that, that took place in 2008. Mm -hmm. But uh, for me, it translated to uh, start doing something. You know, I, I, I moved away. We didn't move away, but we bought a country property, and then the reason is for me to hide and then at the same time serve people who are poor. Mm -hmm. That was always in my mind. So we began that. And then my wife was uh, not buying into the idea in the beginning. She was just watching from far away. But um, I just kept on reading the books, you know, rediscovering my identity, and then serving people. She was like noticing. But I didn't realize she was actually interested in doing that too. So I kind of did my own mission in, in my own capacity. But uh, it was 2012 when the challenge was made to, to have a television in Indonesia. You know, the challenge was made by the missionaries who came to Indonesia. And then I, I somehow knew that, uh, Lord, this is probably a way for, for, for us to expand, you know, your kingdom. So I took the challenge. I praised the Lord. Right in that event, Shandy had that transformation, you know, in herself, trying to return to the Lord, seeking the happiness that what she was seeing in the missionaries presenting. So we, we had no idea, we had no uh, technical expertise in setting up the television, but I'm the kind of person who like to venture out in something new, like in business, you know, I, I would approach it just like another business venture. So we took it on, we, within two months after this, the, the challenge was made, we, we got on the satellite. You know, the rest is history. You know, we, we set up like a makeshift uh, studio and then we just kept on improving from there. Um, so people say, how do, you, how do you go about doing it? I don't know. I don't plan the way, the, you know, uh, conventional way of planning. I just went. I took the challenge, pick it up and go. Shandy, what's going through your mind? So your husband has launched out into mission work. <laughs> You're being very patient. You're very skeptical. Talk to me about the, the transformation that was going on in your heart. The, the idea that one person would give up a, a comfortable, you've got to be careful how we say that because pressure isn't comfortable and stress isn't comfortable yes, yes. and being empty isn't comfortable, mm -hmm. but materially comfortable mm -hmm. life. The idea that one person would dive into that, that's, that's tough enough to believe. But two people, but you, you both experienced that, that heart change. So describe that process that you went to, how you were able to let go of one and grab hold of the other. You know, I, I, I believe that God works in my heart and his heart you know, different way. And then from that uh, event, because I say something to God, God, if you're willing to give me that kind of story, please, if you love me, I want that kind of story at any cost. So it means that that moment is not my euphoria. I was so ready if I need to replace all of my materialist, you know, all of my money, everything, replace from the, for the story, are willing so that's why when God give us this television this is the best tool for me and husband for me and my husband to get to know him yeah. because you know from people like us we need to empty our money first we need to empty everything first God had to help, you know help, had to help us empty our money we could not we had no power to need, do this yeah. you know like we need to allow him to empty us because if we give him, you know, like automatically, it's hard for, for human, for us. So God needs to give him, to give us his uh, work. So he, he give us the television. So the television is the best tool for me and my husband to empty our pocket. You know, television is like the, you know, feeding a, a giant elephant. That's, that's for know? sure. And then every monthly you need to pay. And this is crazy. You know, because I believe why God give me the television, because the words like any cost, you know, like yes. God keep that words like, really, you want, you want, you want me with 
any yeah. cost. Yeah, sometimes okay. you, you've got to be careful what you ask for. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. because God will answer a prayer yes. like yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. So you had a stylist and a makeup artist mm-hmm. and someone doing your nail and this shit. I'm not being flippant when I ask you this. Mm-hmm. How, how do you how do you just get rid of that and it's all on me now you have to start doing for yourself and again I, I mean this in, in all sincerity what's that transformation like going from having people to wait on you to say well I've got to cook and, and this kind of stuff was that difficult for you to do that of course but that moment I'm I'm so ready yeah to go okay. right because I've been waiting for the exit plan like this. I've been waiting for this moment. So when I get this moment, I just want to go. And then we still have that kind of uh, uh, service, like, you know, my makeup, you know, like hair dryers, everything, driver, security. I still have my fancy house in the in the city of Jakarta. We moved the countryside. Countryside in Indonesia are different. Countryside means that you stay in the poor people. Poor area. Poor area. <laughs> so we moved to the countryside. You know, I learned to be a mother. I learned how to cook, yeah. you know, clean up my ro- my house. Yeah, but they can't have been easy. Nobody likes to move from a nice area to a... <laughs> Village. A, 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 yeah, a ratty area. Yeah. So that, that for anyone, mm-hmm. that would be tough. Was it especially tough for you? Or maybe you've answered the question already when you said you were ready. Yes, I'm I think ready. that's the key. Because maybe, maybe God give me the, uh, you know, the strength that Everything need to see from the eyes of the spirit, not the eyes of the flesh. Maybe that is something that God fulfilled in me. You know, everything I need to see from the eyes of the spirit. You know, like, okay, this is the drill. Like, you need to go, you need to go exit. So this is the way that you need to accept. So, you know, I, I really ready from that moment. So when God put me in the countryside, I learned sleeping on the, on, at the floor. And then even I want to cook a food, I need to cry because I don't know what to do. And then, you know, you know yeah. sweeping floor. Sweeping floor, mopping. I need to cry. I was like, Lord, this is so hard, but I'm really willing to do. And then, you know, cutting your grass, you know, yeah. like, because I, I have everything. I have people to do everything for me. I even don't know how to cook the water. I need to call my mom, mom. I don't know how to cook the, the, the water. And, and then both of us calling each other and she said, if you see the bubble, that's the water. I was like, really? And I'm so happy. I was like, yeah, I know I know how to cook the water. <laughs> I don't know what to do. You know, I, all, I, all I know is spend his money, yeah. just only for me. That's, that's, so when God put me in the countryside, I see the poor you start people. Serving you know? people yeah. yeah, I start serving people. I see the poor people you know, around me. So them, I yeah. kind of really understand that God put me, you know, so my eyes can see the needs. What I know is that if you chose to go back into the business world, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you could become successful like that mm-hmm. because you know what to do. Mm-hmm. There's the, the skills you have, the abilities you have, the intelligence you have. You could at any time go back to a life of business and be successful. Have you ever been tempted to do that? We have um, business partners in the past that are still in contact with us right now. You know, some, some of these people are actually still anxious to, to get us um, going again in business. I told them, you know, we're missionaries. But, you know, I, I can call 10 telephone numbers. I, I can get $1 million, $2 million in my, my bank right now, even just as a loan, just for fun. I can could, I, I, I could, I could do that. But you, 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 you're a committed Christian. Yes. You're converted, born again. You could be a missionary. Yes. With a little business interest on the side. Well, if, if so honestly, why don't for, you? from my own perspective, my own uh, industry, where I come from, you know, it's really hard to stay clean, John, to be honest with you. That's why I, I, I rebuke myself, punish myself, you know, because I wanted to experiment with the Lord. If I'm faithful, you know, in, 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 in the case of being in the business, it's just hard. I don't, I don't want to judge people who are in the business, of course, but I see it from my own perspective, you know, having to evade taxes and then having to bribe officials and then having to actually cut corners, you know, for your own profit, even just to stay on the business. Sometimes you got to do all these things. I, with me, Lord, if I were to go do something, if I want to follow you, the only way is all the way. I want to experience that, you know. I really want to experience if God's faithful, if I just keep straight as an arrow, you know, my business conducts. And then I felt it was actually impossible for me to do that. 
at least my part of the world, my business, you know, being connected with uh, people. So even my business parts, they're, they're, they're not godly people, you know, to, to, to begin with. So if it's only just a matter of like, you know, just, hey, I need money or whatever, let's do something. But, you know, if they actually direct me into something that is not 100% pure, I, I, I'd rather not, you know, because why would I... Why would I do that? If God can already provide me, He's proven so many years already that He is faithful in giving me what I what we need. Shandy, what have you seen where you've where you've seen God demonstrate to you that He is the God who provides for you? <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, like uh, people thought when first day, I just like easily believe on Him. Of course not. Everything is confusing. When the everything money's still is, there, the money's still there. You know, everything is still there. But, you know, we launch ourselves to the ministry, to the service. So, you know, we can't use our money to put everything to the ministry. Yeah. And then one time that, you know, uh, this is like how God tried to show his power. Introduce himself. Introduce <laughs> himself to me and my husband. And then, you know, that moment really, really empty, like because everybody goes to the ministry, to the service. And then I, I have a phone call from my family that my mom has a... Uh, sickness so mm. you know make the sure, sh sure. story short my mom died and then in our culture the first uh, child need to give you know like support everything so I'm the first one so I can't say like God I don't have money anymore so you know at that time please help me and then all of my family you know like saying they're like watching. they're watching like oh his her God will be you know like uh, yeah, put her to shame. Put her, yeah, put mm. her to shame, because I'm the only Christian in my family, and and a missionary. They don't. They don't agree with her being a missionary. They, of they course, don't yeah. agree with me because you know, what is wrong with you? Everybody wants to go to your level, and here you are. You just dumb everything for God. Yeah. The sake something that God is even not exists in this world, you know. And I was like, no, no. And in that moment, everybody like, okay. Look at you what is now. he going to do now for you? Look at your choices. You even cannot support your mom. And inside my heart, like, Lord, you're not, you're not wrong to choose me. You know, I know there's something. Please help me. And then after that, you know, I, we just go to the funeral places to find for the service. And then this lady, you know, I go to, his, uh, to her house and she just looking at me and she said like, hey, you are Shandy and this is your husband Ramon. And then I'm not paying attention that moment because I thought that she is my viewers. And I was like, yes, ma'am, you know, I'm Shandy and this is my husband Ramon. And then she said like, hey, you know, everything that you need, I already, I already uh, prepare. prepare for you. I was like, oh, thank you. I don't, I don't pay attention to that too. And then I was asking her like, okay, can I see? And you know, she start, you know, this is it, you know, this is your chair, this is your flower. And then this is the casket. I was like, wow, I see the casket uh, color is white. And the casket, I know that is really expensive. And I was like, wow, this is expensive. And I thought my husband, maybe this lady is not selling today. <laughs> so, you know, we need to buy for her because she's kind of like pushing us. And then I was like, okay, you know, but our God will pay this uh, bill anyway. And then when even though my, we didn't have money, even though we don't <laughs> uh -huh. have money. And then my mom has already get uh, buried. buried. And then I come to her and I ask like, I want to settle the bill. And she give me the bill. And the bill is just like fifty. About fifty dollars. Oh, about fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. That's, no, that's, that's impossible. And then you know the price of the casket is like. Yeah, almost $2,000 at least. $1,000 at least. I was like, wow, you know, no, 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 no. I was like, ma'am, you are wrong. No, no, I'm not wrong, Chandy, because, you know, the car of the, tra the truck of transportation is not my car. So, you know, all you need to pay is just only for the transportation. Everything on me is free. I was like, no, ma'am. I'm a business person too. I know that you need to have money, you know. And she said like, no, 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 Chandy, this is free for you. And then we can like... um. Argue. <laughs> argue because you know I was like no and then she just hold my uh, shoulders just like listen to me Shandy listen to me I was like okay I want to listen to you you know why I give you free because the day when you come you know that night God give me dream that the face like this named Shandy and the face like this named Ramon and God give me all the lists what you need, even the color of your casket. God says, give her this white color because she wants this white color. Yes, I want that color. And then God says, 
you know, give everything for Shandy. Don't ever ask her for pay because her, her soul is really precious for me. That moment, you know, materialistic person like me, I'm really cry like, wow, Lord, you really exist. From that moment, I tell my husband, you know, everywhere God wants to go, God wants to bring you. If God's willing, I will be your partner. Mm. Everywhere, even the poor, you know, level two, I go as long as, you know, because I have the happiness that the money cannot buy. And I have the happiness that the world cannot offer. So, you know, I have that and I don't, I just want to keep it. I don't, I don't care about, you know, kenyamanan uh, apa? Comfort. I don't care about comfort anymore. As long as I can stay in this kind of society. This work. In this kind of work. I'm happy. <laughs> what are you seeing God do? So you're a missionary. Mm -hmm. Missionaries lift up Jesus and share Jesus and want to attract people to mm -hmm. the gospel, yeah. the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. Let's start talking about what you're seeing in your missionary work as you minister, as you minister to others. It can take on many forms. Of course, there's the television channel reaching all of Indonesia and beyond. Yes. So what are you seeing God do? Well, for me, it's like, um, you know, we used to be caterpillars eating leaves, right? Now you um, transform, you have been transformed to become butterfly, you're eating, you're taking nectars, you know, yes, different trees. food, but from the same animal. You know, we used to consume just something that would actually make us happy, thinking money is all, there's, there's nothing else beyond money. But right now, God is actually giving us souls mm -hmm. for us to be satisfied, you know. And then the money comes when God gives. And then this is actually the beauty before we reach out to people, I, I was thinking that, okay, God needs my money. Okay, here's television, there's a clinic, there's people to be served. I thought God needed my money. Okay, let's help him out. You know, mm -hmm. came to the point where, oh, okay, this is serious. You know, and then we, we came to hardships financially, but then God allowed that. Now we're seeing many, many souls coming to Christ. Actually, that gives us happiness. You know, the, the success of bringing gospel is not about people coming to church, getting baptized, become, increasing our membership, but Success of the gospel is when people are able to see Christ in you, when we're experiencing the, 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 the faith of Christ in, in our daily life, trying to reach out to people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, this work is wonderful. We get the different responses from places we haven't even heard. You know, just uh, this past weekend, we got a telephone call from one, one, one island. It's called Haruku Island in the eastern part of Indonesia. What's taking place is 27,000 people population in the island have never seen Seventh-day Adventism. There's a television viewer that we have there. And this past Sabbath, there's a, uh, his daughter just got baptized. And then the first ever baptism through immersion in the whole island. It was a big spectacle for people to witness. We just hope it's going to be a flourishing church soon. So we have, you know, responses like this. It, it makes us happy. Amen. You know, it, it's not even about the, we don't even care about money anymore. Yeah. Jesus says, come to me, he that labor and heavy laden. It was such a heavy laden, you know, trying to, uh, pursue all these uh, worldly dreams and uh, God gives us rest meaning that we don't have to care about that anymore and what a happy life serving the Lord you don't have to worry about anything anymore it's such a happy life that people should experience Amen Amen I'm looking forward to hearing about more we'll <laughs> ask you about the clinic Yes and uh, I'll ask you in a moment about some of the interesting opportunities God is giving you to reach people for Jesus with Ramon and Shandy I'm John Bradshaw this is our conversation brought to you by It Is Written Did you know that more than half of Jesus' parables address our relationship with money and material possessions? As God's children, we're stewards of the resources on this earth, and God has given us examples of how to do that well and wisely. As we study managing for the master till he comes, we'll learn how God asks us to care for our fellow man and how to achieve financial freedom through financial faithfulness. Come along for this important study and learn what it means to steward Christ's resources here on earth. Join us for a new It Is Written Sabbath School study each week on itiswritten.tv. Welcome back to my conversation with Ramon and Shandy Tenkano. Conversations is brought to you by It Is Written, and God has done so much through you, leading you from a life that was materially successful and prosperous to a life that is now very successful on the front lines of mission work. We've talked about the television channel that you run that reaches all of Indonesia and beyond. You mentioned a moment ago a clinic. So let's talk about that. What's happening with that? 
Yeah, we, we live amongst the villagers uh, who are really poor and uh, unfortunate financially. And um, we got donated a dental chair um, about 12 years ago. And um, we invited some dentists to participate in running the clinic for the villagers. And they did that for almost a year and then they moved away. One got married or something and then it was dental clinic got empty. And then we finally met a dentist here from America who came to train us to become a dentist. <laughs> so I'm a functioning dentist, even though I'm not a dentist. We do basic uh, operation, you know, we do fillings, you know, we do scaling and extraction. Me and my son and Ashley, most of us are Ashley performing also. So from there, we, we, we understand that um, the health service we provide for people is actually much needed. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a basic clinic. Um, we're trying to expand. We have some people responding from America wanting to actually expand the, the work that we do. So we're going to expand to make floating hospitals because we get telephone calls from different parts of Indonesia, you know, wanting to us send doctors, you know, medical professional nurses and everything. So I have some crazy idea of making a floating uh, hospital on a boat. So that's a future plan. And then invite some doctors who, to sail all over Indonesia with 17,000 islands. So w when you began this mission work, did, what was your expectation? Did you have any ideas to how successful this would be, how people would respond? I'm interested too, when you launched a television channel that reached the entire country, did you anticipate the kind of response and feedback you're getting? Is it more than you had thought? Again, you know, looking from afar, you're thinking, well, Indonesia, how, how successful would Christian television go? Clearly has been successful. Has it been surprising to you? Yeah, because Indonesia has a lot of Muslim people. And then with Muslim, because I have a Muslim background from my father, with Muslim, it's not easy for them to get baptized because they have a lot of pressure from their family, from the society. But you know, so that's why our aim in a, is not baptism. Our aim is give them the hope to see life in a different side. So, you know, we give them, you know, God kind of life give uh, television in Indonesia because they can watch us silently. They can call us silently. They even ask books, yay, can you go here? And then we treat our viewers is like our family. So God give us now uh, airplane. Why airplane? Because we have islands. And it's not easy for us to go there with our own car. So we need to have airplane. So Ramon is the uh, missionary pilot. And then my second one gonna be like missionary pilot to help his dad. And then we, need, we go there, you know, we treat our viewers like our, friend, our family. They call us, hey, can you visit our place and sleep in our house? And we go there because they have like very sim simple, simple, life. simple life. We go there, sleep in the floor with them, you know, eat, you know, catch, you know talk to them. <laughs> and it's really touched their heart. They just like, wow, I see you on the television and you are very famous in the eyes of them. Sure. But look at you, you sleep with the floor with me. You even eat my food, you know, everything. And I was like, I never see people like you. And for us, that is our goals, you know, to give them a different hope in life. Oh, we expected um, everything to become the way it is now. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you're asking, we. There's so many um, aspects of ministry that, that just opens up um, suddenly without us realizing with us. We just wanted to live in the countryside, okay, serve people right there, teaching the poor villages. But now we got a television. Now we have people who are actually um, pushing us to, okay, create this something for the medical professionals to uh, perform, serve Indonesia. And then now aviation, we got an aviation program right now, barely in the beginning stage. So things are opening up. Um, now God is actually returning us the past few years to the society where we once belong. You know, God is sort of uh, saying, okay, be ye separate so I can receive you. But then after that, I send you a sheep amongst the wolves. So God sort of sent us back to the people that, that we vow to never return to. You know, but God said, no, no, you are the one that, that's able to speak with them. Some of these people who are, you know, influential, wealthy people, they, they are dying to see Christ. They're empty. Yeah, so talk to me about that. So what you're saying is that God has given you the opportunity to minister now to some, some of the wealthy people. Yes. You're discovering that among the wealthy in Indonesia, there are people with deep spiritual needs. Yeah. What, what does that look like? 
Well, yeah, we're, we're finding out, well, because we, we experienced that, too, that, that money doesn't really give them happiness. Mem most of these rich people understand money doesn't give them happiness. They buy things not for, for them to make them happy anymore. You know? So God is bringing us to them through this um, um, unconventional avenue of bringing gospel. God is giving us a, a cycling community to run, mm. you know, in which we can cycle, you know, these people that we left, in 2008, and then they're like so many years older, they want to become healthier, they're health concerned, and then they're like, oh, it's good to see you again. Where you been? You've been missing. I heard you become Christian, missionary, and everything. And then oh, let's start cycle again because, you know, they, they realize that, you know, there's things that they need that, that money is not providing. So we're cycling. It's not for the cycling's sake only. You know. We're cycling two, three times a week, you know, on the weekdays, and then after that, they, they have their, you know, they call it the coffee, whatever. We just sit down with them, you know, and then we talk two hours, three hours. We just lend our ears. We just lend our ears, you know, before we lend our mouth, teaching them things that's conventionally, you know, what Adventism would do. But um, beyond that, they, they start coming to us, you know, oh, all this time you've been missing. And the, why did you do this? Why are you actually throwing your money away? Things like that. And then when pandemic came, they said something that kind of struck us. We're like, uh, some of their actually business got hit bad. We're, we're living in the countryside, serving and uh, having this life. They say, you know this is coming. This pandemic thing, you know this was coming, didn't you? You know things that we don't know. Tell us more. You know, I know these things that you live, the value, the choice that you make, you are wise uh, in, in Muslim words. They say there's this... Um, word that they describe the wise people, you know, the people of the book. So you're discovering that among among the influential people in society, there's yes. a, a, a cognizance of the times in which we're living and a desire to replace that emptiness with something that, that matters. Yes, Holy Spirit is with them too, right? We believe the Holy Spirit is working with them. You know, they, don't, they will not approach Christianity the way we understand it. I grew up with it, but they understand something is wrong. The very foundation of this hold where it's uh, actually built upon is coming loose. They know that. Muslims understand there is this Imam Mahdi that will come at the end of time that will actually judge everybody. You know, some of them believe that this Imam Mahdi is actually Isa, Jesus himself, the, the son of Mary. So we have some, some similarity, and then we know the crisis that's about to come. We, we, we talk about this, and some of them are actually responding. And then some of them, we give these books that we, we know, the great controversy we share. Ah, they, they, oh, no wonder you're making these choices. No wonder you disappeared from us many, many years. You know, I said, yeah, we know a lot more than you think we know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so that's how we, the, the entry points with them. You know, that's why we, we want to build this center of influence in which People can come in, they can spend one night, one weekend, whatever, you know, I, I'd like to invite them into Sabbath service that's, that's uh, not conventional with us, you know, we we'll sit down and share. You know. Because, you know, they ask for that, not us, that, that is not our... Yeah, that's our, not our idea. That is not our idea because they ask us like, hey... Why do you build something? Why do you build something? I need to bring my family, my wife, you know, my parents, my children. You know, can we just hang out with your family? Learn about you. You know, right? learn about your value. You know, we just want to spend time with you. You know, with the uh, rich people, they need to trust you first, right? When they trust you, they want to hang out and spend their time with you. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> they give us the, the idea. Can you build something for us, you know, so we can yeah. go there, Guess how <clears throat> spend our time with your family, and then, you know, get exposed with your choices. You know, like people ask, like, you want to build a sanitarium? No, I, I don't want to build a sanitarium. I just want to build, like, the place that they can bring their family, spend time with us, and that's it. Expose them to the life that we choose. Yeah. It's fascinating that God brought you out but is using your past to reach people who are still there. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, I'm, I'm hopeful that, that as, as I'm hearing this, people will hear this and, and be prompted. There are some segments of society that are kind of tough to reach, yes. kind of tough mm -hmm. to reach. But if you are from a certain segment of society, you already have an in, right? Mm -hmm. If you live in a neighborhood and you're a Christian living in that neighborhood, 
that's that's a mission field. Yes. Yes. If you're in a certain social strata or of a certain profession, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's an in. Mm -hmm. I wonder I wonder if enough people realize that God has equipped us not just for the here and now, not just for us, but so that we can reach other people. Yes. Yeah. So that's important. Yeah. Hey, so this is something I wanted to ask you. So you're very successful in business, doing well, life is good, not good, mm -hmm. you know. You, know. Uh, you had this desire to become missionaries. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear you say anything about, we spent a year at the Missionary Training Institute. Oh, <laughs> we, got a, we went to college and got a degree in missiology. <laughs> I, I, seems like I missed that part. <laughs> yeah, because we never did. <laughs> so, <laughs> we never did. So you dived in the deep end. Yes. Pretty much. You understand why I'm asking him, so I'm not, I'm not saying you should have done those things. Yes. Yeah. But you dived into something you'd, you'd never done, never been trained to do, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and thank God you did. H how, how did you orient yourself to this work you'd never done before? Maybe like, <laughs> um, I get baptized when I'm married with my husband, and then his family and him always bring me to the you know, like event, like hot, yeah, hot yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, camp meetings, camp uh, meeting. revival meetings. And yep. I always hear the message, but it's just only the problems. Theories. Oh. And then I need something, the solution, the solution, <laughs> you know. And then I'm speaking to the eyes of the viewers, you know, to the eyes of the attendant. I need the solution. So, you know, when I go to this direction, you know, living by faith as a missionary, I got kind of like give me, you know, you remember when you go, you, you there, you need that solution. So those people need the solution. For us to give the solution to the, to the people, we need to experiment. experiment with the solution. We need to tell them, okay, if you go to that, Right, to that path you need to do this so you know we kind expecting those things I'm, I'm, I'm the one like you know I need that solution because I've been hearing the problem 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 with the solution and then you know I tell God if you want to use me I need to give this to the to the people the hope the solution because especially we have the end time message and that is so very powerful and then how people can survive with that kind of situation. We need to give them the solution. Yeah. This is the solution, you know. So, you know, kind we of We just ex that. experiment. There's really that experimenting is actually our training. R yeah. Ramon, did you, ever, did you ever wake up in the morning and say, today I'm a missionary, what in the world am I doing? <laughs> well, in the first few years, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, what, what, what am I doing? You know, what am I doing? And then everybody is trying to convince me, even families, you know, who yeah, are absolutely. actually church goers, uh, try to discourage me, you know, in many ways because they're just living by theories. No, I said, no, I, I, I want to I wanna experiment this. And I want to know, I want to go to God's school, experiment Him. Um, but, you know, it's just like uh, the, the, the things that come into our ears kind of discourage me, got me thinking, what am I doing here? But then, you know, the solution is this, shut your ears. And then you get accustomed when God will provide along the way. And at some point you say, oh, you know what? The sweeter we serve, the longer we serve him, the sweeter he gets. Yes. Taste yeah. and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is a man who trusts in him. That's, that's the verse I go by. So back up 15 years, mm -hmm. yes. um, you knew that one day you would retire and you'd have plenty to live on and you'd be mm -hmm. comfortable and so on. Fast forward 15 years, you're living by faith. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, how long can you do this for? Well, this is a life choice, John. <laughs> <laughs> this is we're happy doing it. You know, experimenting and seeing the result that God gives us a new heart and, um, you know, and having to see souls, mm -hmm. seeing souls, it's, it's a life choice. Okay, someone right now is thinking mission work. Maybe they're thinking of stepping away from the calling on their life right now, the profession they're in. How would you advise somebody first to assess whether or not the call is from God mm -hmm. and then to pursue it if they really feel like it is? What's your advice? Well, we, we tend to define a mission field according to our own wisdom. Mm -hmm. And um, as a result, well, people get disappointed. You know, they, they realize down the line it's not for them. But I think if you 
submit to the Lord and let God decide for you. Sometimes the mission field that we think about is not really um, the mission field that God wants you to be. You know, what I mean by that is um, a few days ago, I, I heard somebody who had the heart for people that he's been connected with. Uh, he's been playing golf with them to reach out to them. I'm like, uh, he felt bad because uh, golf is ident identical with um, you know, rich people's sports. But then, look, it's not even the golf. Golf is only the tool for you to reach out to them. When else can you actually sit down with somebody for four or five hours a day? That's your mission field. You know, whatever you have in your hand, consecrate it uh, to the Lord and you do something, maximize it to, because you, you have to, first of all, you have to have, have to heart for people. That is, you know, God is actually going to lead you where He wants you to, to be. It's not necessarily like you got to go to a jungle, you have to leave your career, you have to, I don't know, it's not for us to say. It, God has to say 100% where He wants you to be. Yeah. And it could just be next door to you, you know. So many people here in America are so skeptical, skeptical about God. Maybe God wants you to reach out to them, you know. Uh, things like that, you know. We, we try to complicate mission world, but it's actually really, really simple. As we close, what are you expecting God to do as you carry forth this mission calling? Um, for us, <laughs> um, I just want to learn more surrender to Him more belief that the choices that he make is good for my, that is the tools. And then, you know, uh, working with the Lord, the hard things is the surrender because we thought that, you know, everything is good, right? Ministry, you know, uh, give everything, you mm -hmm. know, like the, the service. But we kind of missing the surrender because we thought we need to choose the service that the ministry that we, we want to end. But, you know, I just want to, to learn that, Lord, you need to choose for me because everything is not for the work. Everything is for myself. Yeah, it's not How I can be a better person. Yeah, it's not the work, but it's the, the transformation. And I just want God to do it for us. And then for the kids, because I have my children. I want my children to see the choices that we make. And we, we thank God because they Starting to see it. They're starting to see. Uh, uh, starting to believe it. Yeah. They see disappointments. They see a lot of disappointment, but for the disappointment, they come through God by Himself, and now they see. They say like, "Mommy, can we join your ministry? Can we join working with the Lord?" And I told them, "You're gonna get disappointment. It's okay if you can make it. We also can make it. <laughs> now, that is our aim." <laughs> yeah. It's been a real joy talking with you. Thank you both. Thank God you. bless you. I appreciate it very, very Praise much. Thank you for thank having you. us. And thank you for being here. What a joy. And I, I, I hope and pray that you're inspired and encouraged to be a missionary. Wherever God calls you to be a missionary, for undoubtedly He has called us all to serve Him. With Shandy and Ramon Tencano, I'm John Bradshaw, and this has been our conversation.